There are lots of wonderful things to see in the desert. The man with the yellow hat and George were on a fossil finding vacation there. Here we are, George. The Quint's home away from home. I'll tell the quince we're here. That lizard had the fastest tongue George had ever seen. Huh? It seemed like everything moved fast in the desert. <laughs> <laughs> Including rabbits. Luckily, monkeys are pretty speedy too. Okay, George, ready to look for fossils? George? Now where could he have gone? <laughs> Hi there. I'm John, John Altaharne. You must be George. The Quince said their monkey friend George was coming to visit, and you're the only monkey I've seen today. <laughs> ah, what a wonderful interruption. In fact, my name, Atahalne, is Navajo for he interrupts. <laughs> I'm a Hatari, a medicine man. One thing I do is make paint. <laughs> John's paint looked a lot like rocks. You see? Instead of painting with paint, I paint with sand. Oh, huh. I grind different colored rocks into sand. Ooh, ha, ha, ha. The canyon has all the paint supplies I need. Ooh. Whatever colors I can't find there, I make with food. Ah. And then to paint, I take the sand and let it slip through my hands like this. There you are, a George in sand. George? I think someone is looking for you. <laughs> Should we go get him? <laughs> the man had to see this. <laughs> John's painting used to be there, now it was there, and there, and there. George! John's going to go hunt fossils with us. Do you want to come? Uh. Or play with your rabbit friend? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're that way at the river if you need anything. Okay. Bye, George! He needed to fix the painting before they came back. Luckily, he had a lot of paint supplies. But paint was very hard to make. Maybe John had some already ground up in those buckets. <laughs> But it was all sand-colored sand. And then George remembered. Whatever colors I can't find, I can make with food. Ah. <laughs> oh, there you are. Would you like a snack? Now George had lots of colors to choose from. <laughs> <laughs> George
George loved to travel. <laughs> but this time was even better because he was traveling with his friend Marco. Ready for a weekend in the sun? <laughs> yeah. Okay, all set. Since you paddled out, I'll paddle back. Hmm. Where are the paddles? Don't need them. We're walking. Huh? The raft is for the boys and the luggage. Huh? But how can they touch bottom? Uh -huh. It's low tide. Plus, we're standing on a sandbar. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's a big pile of sand, only underwater. The tide brought it in. <laughs> <laughs> you remember the tide, George? The moon pulls on the ocean and makes the water come in and go out. <laughs> Wait until you see the tidal pool. The tide makes those, too. Yeah. Sounds fun. <laughs> George and Marco were amazed by the tidal pools. What do you guys think? Ooh. <laughs> Look at all this. It had fish, starfish, and anemones. Clams. Hey, if you dig deep enough, maybe you'll find buried treasure. <gasps> buried treasure? Ah! Rumor has it the early explorers buried some around here somewhere, but no one's ever found it. Hey, I bet we could find it. <laughs> but finding buried treasure was harder than they thought. Oh, the problem with looking for buried treasure on the beach is there's too much beach. <sighs> you know what we should do? <laughs> we should make our own buried treasure. Luckily, monkeys always have lots of treasure with them. <laughs> wow, that will make great treasure. We can use the box my mommy put the toothpaste and stuff in. <laughs> but... I haven't put in any treasure. I know! I can put in this! My silver wolf. My uncle made it in honor of our band, Lobos de Plata. It's my favorite thing ever. to remember where it's buried. Huh. Hey. Good idea. We could measure from the pier. The treasure is five giant George steps away from the post with the rope on it. <laughs> A dolphin! 
It was deep winter, a time when the whole world seemed snowy and cold. Here we are. But this year was the snowiest and coldest ever. Come on. It was so cold that Jumpy Squirrel had decided to move indoors. The house had everything. It was warm, it was quiet, and thanks to Jumpy, it had lots of nuts. <laughs> it is cold in here. Let's turn up the heat. The man and the monkey were back. <laughs> Jumpy had to get out fast. <laughs> but no sooner was he out than he wanted back in. Luckily, Jumpy had a lot of in and outdoors. just needed to sneak past the monkey. Huh? But monkeys have very sharp ears. have to fix that. There we go. Hi, George. Huh? <laughs> well, we can't leave holes in the house. All the heat will get out. Uh, no, Jumpy needs to stay outside. There's more food for him out here. He'll be happier in his own home. George wasn't so sure about that. And neither was Jumpy. It was way too cold. His door was sealed shut. But Jumpy still had another squirrel door upstairs. What was that? Uh huh. Uh huh. Yep. Your friend Jumpy has been very busy. No wonder the house is so drafty. <sighs> okay. We have got to insulate this house. Huh? Insulate. It means keep the warm air in and the cold air out. Okay, cold, ready or not, here we come. First, the man sealed around the windows. <laughs> yeah, the caulk is squishy, so you can fill the holes and keep cold air out. You wanna try? Monkeys like knocky sock. They're knocky, they're socky, and they're easy to grab with toes. Giorgio! 
oh, oh, oh. Come, meet the newest members of the family. Oh. Mm. Okay, this is Eeny. This is Minnie. This is Miney. And this is Freckles. Now I can have the fresh eggs every day. And fresh eggs? Mwah! They make everything beautiful. Ooh, you come tomorrow, Giorgio, and I will make you a nice fresh egg omelet with pesto and peppers. <laughs> but the next day... <coughs> oh, Giorgio! <laughs> oh, there were no eggs. Oh. Or the day after the next day. What am I gonna cook? Oh. Or the day after the day after the next day. Oh. Ah, there is no hope. I wonder why they won't lay the eggs. Maybe they don't like their food. <laughs> okay, new food. <laughs> but the next morning. <sighs> well, I guess it was not the food. You think maybe they don't like their beds? It is not the bed. You think they don't like gnocchi? Ah, maybe they're just unhappy here. I guess I'll have to send them back to the country. George didn't want his new friends to leave. He'd miss them. The chef would miss them, too. Excuse me. The chickens seemed happy enough. They pecked around happy as can be every day. Maybe they were unhappy at night. There was only one way to find out. Is that gonna be warm enough, George? Uh-huh. Okay, see you in the morning. Bright-eyed and bushy-tailed! <laughs> that night, things got a little noisy. Clangy and bangy. And yowly. And howly. And sometimes all at once. So the next morning, Instead of being bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, George was just bushed. Giorgio, you look so tired. Did you not get any sleep? George loved going to Mabel's department store. I know there's a lot you like to do here, but let's not stay too long, okay? I just need to buy some shoelaces. George did have a lot of stuff he liked to do at Mabel's. 
in the TV department, he liked to see how many monkeys he could become. Over in gift wrap, he liked to help the lady tie up packages. And he really liked to ride the escalator, always remembering to hold on to the rails. George, over here. What do you think, huh? <laughs> yeah, I like him too. <laughs> oh, and thanks for checking in. <laughs> the place George loved best was the kids' department. George saw something he'd never seen before. Where did the train come from? And where did it go? George had to find out. So that's where it came from. That little lamp on the table. <laughs> George found that when the train moved across his hand, it got a lot smaller. So he thought he'd try an experiment. Sure enough, when the lamp was close to the screen, the train got smaller. But as the lamp got further away, the train got bigger. Oh. That's really something, huh? <laughs> you want to see how it works? <laughs> now, see how the train has been cut out of the lampshade? Now the light shines through it, and voila! And if you don't like trains, we've got ponies, race cars, aardvarks. Now that George knew how the lampshade worked, he couldn't wait to get home and make one. <laughs> Meanwhile, the man with the yellow hat was waiting to pay for his new clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, George, I still have to pay, but it shouldn't take too long. I hope. <laughs> Seven people ahead of me. Five more people, and then it's my turn. Three more to go. I'll be out in a jiffy. Listen, why don't you go home and I'll meet you there? <laughs> Closing in five minutes. Please make your purchases now. I'm trying, okay? George couldn't wait for his light picture to move across his own room. Uh -huh. But wait, how did it move? Uh -huh. <laughs> Mabel's department store is now closed. Please make your way to the exit. <laughs> It was George's first spring day back in the country. <laughs> and already, he was starring in a movie. Hiya, Mr. Rankins. Yeah. Hi, Bill. George? OK, George. You go in first and see if there are any baby ducks running around. <laughs> I'll follow with my camcorder. 
<laughs> this will make a great scene for my science project about baby animals. This is Bill, bringing you baby ducks, live from the Rankin's Bar. Yet. They're still inside their eggs. <laughs> sure, George, look. You and me and other mammals come into the world as babies. But birds, ducks for example, come as eggs. <laughs> yep, Dumpling's babies will hatch from these eggs as long as she sits on them to keep them warm. Sprouts on her, George. If she doesn't sit on them, they'll get cold and never hatch. Oh. oh, my battery died. I'll have to get another one. Don't let the eggs hatch without me, okay? Where was Dumpling going? She was supposed to be keeping her eggs warm. still warm, but if Dumpling didn't come back soon... <gasps> George decided that if Dumpling wasn't going to sit on her eggs, he'd have to do it. <laughs> Carefully. <sighs> well, sitting on a nest, hatching eggs, is actually pretty boring. No problem. I think that's great you're filming a duck hatching. No! <laughs> this I've got to get on tape. Bill here bringing you a first. A city kid sitting on a nest of duck eggs. George, why are you sitting on a nest of duck eggs? <laughs> like he's trying to keep Dumpling's eggs warm. Wow! I don't believe it. A duck is hatching right before my very eyes. On camera! Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Rankins, you don't want to miss this. Your ducks are hatching. We'll, we'll be, be right, right there. Saturday was a day when monkeys and men with yellow hats return books and get new ones. A whole building full of books. What could be better than that, huh, George? Yeah. Are you excited to get a new book, George? Oh. Adventurous Henry is one of my favorites, too. Maybe you should check it out again. It's called renewing a book. People do it all the time. Uh -huh. George was thrilled no. because the man with the yellow hat Whoa. had only read the book to him 18 times. That's strange. I don't see the librarian. Mrs. Dewey? Huh. I'm right here. <laughs> oh, there you are. Sorry for the mess. My work keeps stacking up. Uh, George would like to renew a book, please. Yeah. 
I sure wish I had someone to help out today. Something tells me George is available. That's stupendous! Thank you, George. George, I have some research to do. Will you be all right here by yourself? <laughs> well, then I'll be back in a few hours. Be a good little monkey librarian. Uh -huh. <laughs> ah. Okay, George. Would you mind going through this pile and separating out the DVDs? George soon discovered that he was a super fast movie grabber and a super fast book scanner. And a super fast pencil sharpener. Can, George. Until then, it looks like you're in charge. Huh? You're a terrific helper. Ah! George was in charge of a library. Hmm. George wondered if he should put the rest of the books away. <laughs> it seemed like something a monkey in charge would do. George had put the books away in record time. <laughs> this librarian stuff was easy. <laughs> Hi, George. Where's the librarian? <laughs> oh, I see. Can you help me find Hundley's favorite book? It's called Dachshunds and Dandelions. <laughs> it's a small yellow book. It's usually on this shelf. A yellow book? <laughs> no problem. George was very familiar with that color. <laughs> nope, not it. <laughs> nope, and nope. There were a lot of yellow books. <laughs> no, no, no. That's it, dachshunds and dandelions. See? <laughs> Thanks, George. I'll check this out in the main library. Goodbye. <laughs> Finding books was hard. When the man with the yellow hat told George he was bringing home a wondrous animal called a chameleon, George decided to surprise it with a gift. Hi, George. That's terrific. It looks just like Jade. Take a look. Professor Wiseman and I rescued her when she lost her jungle home. She's, uh, there. See? Huh? Look, she's changing color. Chameleons can do that. See, she's usually green like her jungle surroundings, and that's why we named her Jade. But under the sun's rays, she got warmer, and that made her change color. Watch. Chameleons change color when the temperature changes. <laughs> and sometimes when their mood changes, too. Anyway, today Jade will get a new home at the zoo.
That is, if I can convince Dr. Chroma that she's the kind of rare chameleon he's been looking for. Oh. Yep, I I've already prepared my speech. Now I just need to pick up some posters. Hey, do you want to feed Jade while I'm gone? Uh -huh. Oh, great, her food's on the table. Uh, just drop in a few pieces and she'll do the rest. Thanks, George. Bye-bye. Jade had an amazing tongue. George wondered if he could get his tongue to work like that. <laughs> George had left the cage open. <laughs> Now Jade was gone. No way for George to get to Jade. He'd have to find a way to get Jade to come to him. <laughs> Introducing Squeaky. What chameleon could resist? Nothing brought out the puppy and Hundley like a squeaky toy. The squeaks were coming from George's apartment. George hoped that Squeaky would lure Jade back to her cage. All he could do now was wait, quietly. On a hot day, it's a good idea if both you and your garden get plenty to drink. That's why the man with the yellow hat was making orange juice while George watered the garden. Sort of. Hey, George. How about taking a bath to wash all that mud off? <laughs> George was puzzled. Did the bathtub run out of water? <laughs> hey, George, I'm not getting any water downstairs. How about you? I'd better call Mr. Quint. George didn't understand why not having any water led to Mr. Quint digging up their yard. Seeing as how I can't offer water, how about some fresh OJ? Oh, wouldn't say no to that. <laughs> so, how's it look, Mr. Quint? Did our well run dry? Oh, no, 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 just a broken pump. You got plenty of water down there. Huh? There's water under the dirt, George. Huh. Yeah, yeah. Now, this here is your house. That's the water. Huh. And to get to it, all you have to do is dig a well. Huh? Yep, a well. See, a well is just a hole in the ground that's deep enough to reach water. 
and a pump, like that one there, suctions the water up and out. Well, sort of like the way you're using that straw. Every time you suck on it, you're pulling the orange juice up out of your glass. <laughs> See, this is actually an old pump, George. Years ago, people either did their washing here or used buckets to carry water inside. Water would get sucked into this pipe and then come out here. <laughs> yeah, just like that. Except you're not allowed to play with your food. <laughs> Nowadays, an electric pump sucks up the water and sends it through a long pipe straight into our house. <laughs> Easier than buckets, huh? <laughs> Well, your house won't be seeing water for a few more days, I'm afraid. I have to order you a new pump. A few days? Well, I guess that means we're going back to the city, George. Some of us still need a bath. There are those who appreciate a clean lobby. And then there's George. Okay, go straight in and run a bath, George. <laughs> Hello? Oh, Professor Wiseman. Oh, yes, that does sound serious. Only one octopus? Hey, George. I have to go help Professor Wiseman. Don't forget about that bath. George decided that the best thing to do was to put all his toys in the tub. Hi. Leave a message when you hear the... George? Hello? Is anyone there? I just wanted to make sure you saw that orange fly I slipped under your door. We have to shut off all the water at 4 o'clock, which is... now! George thought Professor Wiseman's beach house was great. This time, it was even greater because George had brought Yorbo, the friendliest robot ever. Searching, searching, searching. Item found. Ah! <laughs> Yorbo is great, yes? Ah! Yorbo's next job was to help George and the man with the yellow hat pack a lunch for the beach. No, not... Look out! Ah! Oh, uh, sorry, George. I I'm listening to an audiobook, The Slimy Sea Monster from the Sea. It's great! And scary. George didn't understand how something could be great and scary. <sighs> Thanks. <laughs> now, are you ready for a long hike to the beach? Hope we don't run into any slimy sea monsters. Whew. George couldn't think of a better way to spend the day than exploring the beach with Yorbo. Keep items in here. <laughs> Say, George, you want to go swimming? <laughs> oh, good idea. Sorry, Yorbo. Robots can't swim. Could you read the manual again, please? <laughs> well, George, if Yorbo was made of plastic like your bucket or wood like this chair, he could go in the water. But Yorbo is made of metal, which rusts when it gets wet. And rust is very bad for metal because it does this. <laughs> Last 
grass monkey in as a rotten turnip. <laughs> I guess a storm is coming. Correction, the storm is here. Quick, George, let's get inside. Ooh, made it. Okay. George thought it would be fun to sit inside a cozy house and watch a storm with the man and your bow. George, you can't go outside when there's thunder and lightning. Oh, your bow is out there. Don't worry. He'll get wet, but we'll clean and dry him before he has time to rust. As soon as the storm quiets down, we'll go get him. Uh... Hey, how about a game of tic-tac-toe? George usually really enjoyed tic-tac-toe, but this time he couldn't get his mind off Yorbo. really did a number on the beach. Don't worry, George. Yorbo's a tough little robot. We'll find him. <sighs> Under the seaweed? Could be. Okay. Yorbo wasn't under that seaweed. Or any of the seaweed. <sighs> okay. <laughs> it was a little cold to be doing this, and it was too big a job. George had really wanted to spend the night in an igloo. <gasps> and maybe he still could. He could build his igloo right inside the house. A smaller igloo. It was nice and warm. George figured he'd better turn down the thermostat so his igloo wouldn't melt. Oh, it's freezing. Oh, I must have turned the heat down too low. is off. No wonder it's so cold. Probably upstairs and... Oh. What? Oh, boy. George! Uh, George, why is there a melted igloo in the living room? 
<laughs> uh-huh. You were cold outside. <laughs> so you thought you'd build an igloo inside. Uh-huh. Uh, makes sense. For a city kid. <laughs> As the Sprout Master of Sprout Troop number 674, I am proud to present Bill with his badge in winter camping. <laughs> wow! There. And now, George and I would like to invite you all to a little celebration. <laughs> George's igloo might be too cold for sleeping, but it was just right for a party. Hey, George. Got any ice for the punch? <laughs> wow, thanks. And that was the start of the Monkey Igloo Social Club. <laughs> Open every weekend until it melted in the spring. Hey, just in time. Uh, could you grate the carrots into the batter and put it in the oven while I change my shirt? <laughs> I guess they should make aprons that cover your arms. <laughs> oh, ah. Yeah, that's great. Uh, then would you slice the cucumbers into the soup and put the apples in the fruit bowl? Thanks, George. <laughs> Hey, I think we finally have things under control. <laughs> what is that awful smell? <laughs> George, uh, thanks for finishing the soup. It smells <sighs> strange. Is this a cucumber? Mm. It tastes like eggplant. <laughs> it is eggplant. So what did you put in the carrot cake? <laughs> is, it, is this some kind of radish? <laughs> radish cake and eggplant soup and a smelly fruit bowl. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> George couldn't understand it. How could something that tasted so good in the store taste so bad in the soup? I'm sure you could make a good soup with eggplant, but this was a recipe for cucumber soup. <laughs> <laughs> well, we still have, oh, 10 minutes. Oh, well, I guess we should just order takeout. Huh? Ooh, yeah! <laughs> uh, but, uh, where are you going, George? You are back! And I think I know why. You dropped this on your last visit. Oh. Correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't these pictures of carrots, cucumbers, and apples? Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, I see it now. Way to go, Dad! Tell me, my friend, are those the vegetables you have been looking for on your visits? <laughs> Let me get them for you. You don't want them? <laughs> ah. Oh. Ah, oh, nothing like a hard day of analyzing carbon isotope ratios to give a girl an appetite. Hmm. Something smells weird. Oh, that's my uh Radish cake. Really? Yum. George! <laughs> Perfect uh -huh. timing! George? Is that your name? Uh-huh. Hello. I am Win Kuang An, owner of the Hua Mai Grocery and Takeout. This is my wife, Hua, and daughter, Mai. Oh, well, hello. Hi. He named the store after us. It means peach blossom. Is that the new Vietnamese grocery on Inn Avenue? I've been looking forward to your opening. Oh, me too. Is all this from your store? It is. We thought we should help George carry in his order. 
we brought you eggplant curry, bun tit nung with nook kyum, a fish sauce with daikon radish. Oh, I love that sauce. Bitter melon soup, sa hat lo, which is pomegranate seeds in coconut cream and durian shakes. Mmm, it all looks great. And there's so much. Uh, would you join us? Huh? We would be honored. <laughs> A few days later, George headed back to Hua Mai. Someone's been talking. Me! I told everyone I know about how great the food is, and I know a lot of people. But don't worry, George. You'll always be customer number one.